Known by many as Dave Brown USA, a man of diverse talents, an entrepreneur and personable. Dave Brown is one of the entertainment's most respectable movers and shakers. After making his way to Hollywood upon receiving his bachelor's degree from Morehouse College in 1991, he found great success in the entertainment industry alongside fellow actor and friend Morris Chestnut, who Dave credits introduced him to Hollywood. His love for connecting individuals to each other through nightlife events has grown into a long list of successful parties, special engagements and other social affairs. Dave Brown often says, I am about building strong relationships and a great rapport with people. So I sat down with Dave Brown USA on The Dentist Show on his experience so far in Ghana as part of the year of return. Enjoy. You've come all the way from the US, LA, and you've come to Ghana as part of the year of return with your family. Yeah. And for me, I want to know what you think about this year of return. Have we really made an impact? Oh my gosh. What have you heard about the year of return? I have to go back and say, um, it's, it's a wonderful experience, first of all. But it takes me back, I think, when I was 12 years old, when I first came to Africa. And when I first came to Africa, my brother and I were so excited about going to Africa. Mm. And all we knew about back then was jungle, Tarzan, Jane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my parents kept us in this, this mode of thinking that that's what Africa was all about. Mm. And so when we got there, we saw it was a city. And we were like, Mom, Dad, this is a, it's a city. It's not, mm. it's not a jungle. jungle. And they said, that's what we want you to understand. Don't believe everything you see on TV. We want you to experience it yourself. And so coming back and bringing my daughter, mm -hmm. who's 12 years old now, mm -hmm. and letting her experience the same thing, I said, oh, we have to do this trip. Mm -hmm. And this is the greatest year for it to happen, mm -hmm. being that this is the home of return. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it feels so good to me because I've been to Africa four times, but this time, when you know you have your daughter with you mm. and, and you got your family, it's more of a homecoming because we're all embedded in the same ex this this experience. Mm. And so being here, I've done things this time that I didn't I, when I came to Ghana the first time, I wasn't do. able to do, and it really sculptured me to understand mm. that I'm black, I'm mm -hmm. proud. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I I know that we are very strong in numbers mm. and you see that when you come to Africa. Mm. Absolutely, you definitely see that. I want to find out from you, you went to Cape Coast. Yeah. We've had, I mean I've been to Cape Coast and I found it emotional mm. but I feel like the African Americans feel more emotion oh, than I did. I gotta say when we went to was it the castle and when you see the dungeon it's like you think of, wow, we're about to walk down to a dungeon. Mm. And when the tour guide was explaining to us about the different areas mm. that the slaves were chained and laying down, mm. first of all, when you walk down, the I, I can already feel the spirits in there. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. you. You felt the spirits of understanding that a lot has happened in this space. Mm. And for them to say that 200 slaves were in each compartment, it made you just cringe like, yo, and just to understand that this is how we were treated. Mm. And then to know upstairs was a church that's right up above. Oh. It made you go, mm, How is that possible? How? How is that possible that you can treat people this way mm. knowing that upstairs mm. they praise God and mm -hmm. upstairs right up above. Mm -hmm. But then you have lives that are dying, chained, laying in feces. It was, it was very shocking and very emotional. You know, it's hard, you know, even for my daughter, she was kind of like, yeah, kind of queasy with yeah. it because, you know, understanding and listening and hearing all the different things yeah. that, that took place in this dungeon, mm. you know, made me really go, wow. And then breaking it down to where, when you saw after all that he had introduced to us when we were there, mm. it says, the door of no, no return. return and understanding that once the slaves walked through that door, they were never yeah, ever gonna come back that. to see the motherland. Yeah. And it made you go, wow, this is, a, this is, and I think for 
Americans, we don't understand and know about the struggle. We don't really, really know about the struggle. Mm. And like I said, people don't really understand what Africa is until you experience it. Yeah. Because they'll downplay what Africa is on TV and stuff in the U.S. Yeah. But until you come home and you, you witness it and you take it in, that is the greatest situation. Mm. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm blown away. I'm going back with a blow horn when I get back to America wow. saying, hey, if you do not make this trip, you are doing a disjust to you as a black human being, yeah. not understanding knowing where you come from. Mm. And so my mom's side of the family is from Ghana. Mm. And my dad's is from uh, Nigeria and Cameroon. Cameroon. And so I said, we, I have to go back and know and, and be here Absolutely. and experience Ghana on this note. Mm. So I, I, I'm really touched mm. by this trip. This trip has really touched me in so many different ways. Wow. Yeah. You know, I had a conversation with an American and he was like, you know, we keep saying, you know, come back but nobody really understands the African-American and what they have been through. Mm. They feel like we can't be expecting them to come back straight away like that because mm -hmm. we don't know what they're going through. We don't know that they don't know where they're from. Mm. And so for them, it's hard for us to just say, you know, come back and they should come back. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what do you think about that? You know, do you I, think we don't understand you know, each other? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it, I have a friend, I'm gonna quote what he said. Um, Jamie Foxx, who said that we live in slave residue to where they tell us in the States what they want, what mm. we should hear, and mm. we're afraid mm. to make that trip. Yeah. We're, we're afraid to go back and say, you know, they say, oh, if you go back there, I mean, you gotta understand, this really happened. It's like, if you go back to Africa and you get sick, this will have to happen, this will, you get kidnapped. They don't understand. We're not like that. Yeah. We yeah. as black folk are not like, we, we, you know, they pin us against each other yeah. in the States. But when you come back here, everybody's embrace mm -hmm. They embrace you. They pull you in. They say, yeah. yo, hey, brother. Yeah. Hey, sister. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you got to understand this. I mean, the, the event that you guys took me to last night. And I'm <laughs> sitting there going, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, I, all these many black folks, it seemed like in, in, in the United States, someone's going to wow. go down. But to see everybody have a good time, they bump you. Oh, excuse me, brother. I was like, I'm home. <laughs> I'm home. That's so I'm home. It doesn't happen like that in the U.S.? There'll be a fight or there'll be... There'll be a fight or something or it depends on what the situation is. I'm talking about like that type of situation. Wow. Or when I went to go see the concert, when you guys took the concert the other day, and, and, and that was the... Uh, the artist's name was... Um, King Promise or Sarkodie? Well, he's the one that's compared to Jay-Z. Yeah, Sarkodie. And, Sarkodie. and just to see that everybody comes together and how much they get up and... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, oh, you saw me. I was getting up. I was going. I said, hey, I'm home. Yeah. So this was a great experience to understand, to see both sides and say, people in America will never understand mm. what it's like until you sit in it. And now you have to take your own evaluation yeah. of what's going on mm -hmm. and, and close out what everybody's saying to you because not everybody wants you to go over here. Yeah. They don't want you to come spend your money over here. Yeah. But the thing about it is they understand this is the richest continent yeah. in the world. Absolutely. Everybody wants some Absolutely. of Absolutely. And you know what? I like the fact that you touched on, you know, they scare you. They kind of um, deter you from coming. So when you're coming to Africa, yeah. you have to have a malaria tablets right so they scare you that you're gonna come and get malaria you're gonna be sick yeah you have to have a yellow fever yeah if you don't have your yellow fever you can't go to the Africa um, and then the flights are ridiculously high yeah um, and then all of these things kind of you're thinking hmm should I should I really do this you know what am I safe am I coming with my family are we gonna be safe you know you right. have all of these things coming through your mind because of the things that they've put in place right. for you not to come. Well, let's think about this. Let's go back. Let's go back to Malcolm X. Mm. When Malcolm X came back to Africa, mm. that's when he changed. That's true. That's when he understood, wait a minute, hold on. Mm -hmm. Black folks can unite yep. and work together. Yep. And he went back and he started speaking differently than when he came. That's true. So it's the same thing. They're taught this is a bad experience yeah. for you. 
And not only that, it's they don't understand it's all money. Come on, I knew when we had to go with these shots and stuff, it's all money. Mm. Come on, they, they, the shots is like, what, 300 some dollars wow. to go get a shot. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to take these pills, you know? So it's all a tactic to scare you. Mm. But at the end of the day, you can go anywhere in the United States and still get sick. It's true. You can go anywhere and I don't care, Canada, wherever you, you can still get sick. It's true. So I think it's understanding that you're never going to know the real until you experience it. Mm, it's true. And me coming out here and, and bringing my daughter, I mean, she didn't know what to expect, you yeah. know? But being there, and but it was, she didn't know she was going to get the lesson that was taught, mm. you know? Um, even going to here, uh, we went to the site to see the president that was of Ghana. And, and, and Kwame Nkrumah. Yes. Museum. And how they overthrew him, tried yeah. to overthrow him. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. This is crazy. This is, this yeah. is what happens in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you get too powerful, yeah. they want to separate you. It's true. They want to pull you, take you down. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of, I was kind of mm -hmm. like, yo, like, dang, okay. It, it opened up a lot of thinkings mm -hmm. of, okay, wait a minute, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And then when you see all the portraits of everybody he's been, you know, he's touched everybody. Mm -hmm. So growing up, I think I experienced Africa at an early age. Yeah. So I understood. So I thank my mom and dad for doing that. Mm. Uh, my father uh, and my mom, they're, they're, they are my rocks. Mm. And knowing that my father has always been that bridge to Africa because he used to bring Ethiopians over and take them under his wing mm. to where they would you know, become citizens or go to school or better, you know, better education to become something great. Mm. And so I've always, it's always been in my life. So I've always understood said, it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was never afraid to come back mm. to Africa mm. at all. And what's your experience been like with the people? It's been great. Yeah. It's been great. It's, I mean, I'm, <laughs> it, it, it's been so great because I'm a people person. Yeah. And you know, like, like my mom and dad said, they say I have great judgment of character. Yeah. I know when I feel uncomfortable around something, I'm mm. saying, yo, it's time to go. Yeah. Because I see this is not good. This is mm. not going to this is not going to end well. Yeah. You know. So I've had nothing but positive situations here. And you know, everybody's like, oh, well, everybody comes up to you. No, you know what? They come up to you because at the end of the day, they see you mm. and them. Yeah. And they're just saying, hey, yeah. how can I help you? Mm. How can I give to you yeah. what we have over here? Mm. And it's a wonderful thing. Mm. It's a wonderful thing. And if anybody tell you you're different, yo, something's wrong. Mm. You know, we're gonna we're gonna talk about indie nights and what you do. And I'm sure that whilst you've been here, there must be some movies that have come to mind, some things that you think actually we could do this in Ghana. Right. What are, what are some of the things that you've seen that you're thinking? You know what? We could actually do. There could be some collaboration with some of the US actors yeah. or musicians or whatever, collaborate with artists here. I'm sure you must have seen something. Right, well. But before you talk, we're mm -hmm. gonna go for the commercial break and sure. we'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Goober Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Goober Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 40% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Goober Card can also be used as a prepaid Visa card with Access Bank R Partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Call us or WhatsApp us on 0245-156705. Visit www.goobadiaspora.com. Goober Card, the best discount card in Ghana. I'm still here joined by Dave Brown. Dave, do you yeah. think there are possible collaborations mm -hmm. between some of the African Americans in America and some of the Africans here? Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, you took me to uh, a brilliant brother yesterday, uh, Mr. Freedom. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Freedom, when you're telling me the story about 
how at the age of 21, here's a man that became a millionaire mm -hmm. and took his money and invested in real estate. Yeah. And how he said he worked hard. I was really thrown away, yeah. but very attentive to what he was saying mm. about how he became the person he is today. Yeah. And sitting there talking to him and just feeling his energy mm -hmm. made me go, there's a lot of him that a lot of Americans need to understand. Mm. No, and in my book, means next opportunity. Mm. Doesn't mean that you can't make a decision and move forward. Sure. And he's a prime example of a person that says, I'm going to do mm -hmm. and jump out on risk. Yeah. And whatever happens, happens. But he said one key thing, mm -hmm. that all his movements were made because of faith. His God base and understanding that his God, mm. he said, God is going to put me in a position yeah. to make it happen. So I really took to that and me growing up in the church and everything, I understand that. Mm. Because it's the same thing with me. What got me through living in Hollywood mm -hmm. all these years mm -hmm. was my faith. It's my faith. Yeah. Because no, no matter how hard it got, no matter what situations I was in, I would always just say, hey, just get me through this, Lord. Just get me through it. Get me through it. Yeah. And that's faith. So from sitting there and talking to freedom and knowing that he knew some of my, yeah. my colleagues, yeah. you know, uh, him saying that uh, he was, you know, friends with Floyd and, yeah. and knowing Floyd out there, knowing Floyd for years. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Keechee made the call and yeah. said, yo, we got to call Freedom and let him know you're there. <laughs> And, you know, of course, we pull up and say, which one is Dave Brown? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he really embraced us, and it was a great situation. Mm. So looking at what he's doing, mm. we need to really have all these guys, the Robert Smiths mm -hmm. in the U.S., yep. come together with this young prince, yep. I say, mm -hmm. and think about how we can build in Africa. Because, yo, if we can't make our motherland, we can't do anything and buy property in our motherland. Mm. What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Absolutely. We're from here. We yep. have to come back here, mm -hmm. and we have to partake and understand that real estate um, is something. You know, there's you guys been putting in a lot of positive people around me. Chocolate <laughs> has this clothing company. Yep. You know what I'm saying? These, yep. you know, you with your TV show yep. and everything. This is I like this. Yeah. You know, because I'm, I'm I'm pretty much the connector. I know everybody in Hollywood. So when, when people ask me, who do I, uh, when you go to Ghana, you better hit up Venta, you know, hit up Freedom, Chocolate. Uh, you know, these are people because I know what I experienced. Absolutely. And I, I got to say, it's, it's a blessing. Absolutely. And so I want to talk about, you know, how and why you started Indie Nights. Uh -huh. um, you know, if you can share with our viewers what it's about and what you do. Well, I was, um, I was a film major at Morehouse College. And, um, you know, we had to do a short film before we graduated. Okay. Um, and so there were a lot of great short films, but they didn't know, you know, you know, when you graduate, it's like they sit there mm -hmm. and what do they do? That's it. They collect the dust. Yeah. And so I would always have that in the back of my mm. mind. I would always think about, think about, think about how, you know. Yeah. And so when I got to Hollywood, I came to Hollywood as an actor. And I only knew one person when I moved to Hollywood, and that was Morris Chestnut. Wow. And he pretty much took under his wing, I should say, and showed me the do's and don'ts and, like, you know, do this, do that. And as I was going up in the business, I knew a long time ago that Hollywood works off of who you know, not what you know. Mm. Hollywood is built upon relationships. Okay. So what I would do is I said... I would have my birthday party. Okay. And you understand, when I would go into auditions, I'm the guy who used to walk in there, hey, hey, what's up, how you doing, how you doing, how you doing, what's, what's going on? And I would know everybody, mm -hmm. and they'd be in their role trying to audition, and I'm sitting there going, oh, yeah, yeah, so, so. And they're like, hold on, man, I'll talk to you after I finish. <laughs> yeah. You know? But I would get to know everybody. Okay. So I knew everybody, and so when I would have my birthday party, you would have all the who's who's mm. in Hollywood would come to my birthday party, and they'd be like, who is this dude, Dave Brown, <laughs> you know? And so I was able to build a brand, mm. and I knew that 
out of sight, out of mind, how can I put you down if I don't see you? Mm. So if I bring all the writers, the directors, the actors, producers all in one spot, wow. there's no way that you cannot connect. So what I would do is I would go, when I'm, I'm, yo, what, what, what you got on? What's, what's going on? I would talk to them and they tell me, oh, don't worry, we got you in this film. And so I would get into films like that mm. and start doing them. And so I started doing events to keep everybody together. Together, networking. Know? But then there was a voice. And you know when you get the mother voice. Mm -hmm. And the mom, my mom called me one day and she says, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. She says, okay, so you're doing all these events. Mm -hmm. And you built a name in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And she said, people leave from these events. They're drunk. They go home. They may beat their wives. They may beat their girlfriends. They may get into car accidents. Mm -hmm. They may get DUIs. Mm -hmm. They may get all these things. What's your purpose? Wow. And I was like, well, Mom, I'm making much sooner. No, what's your purpose? Wow. And she's basically telling me, how are you helping someone else mm. get to where they need to be? Wow. By doing that. Mm. And then that's when I had a, a moment in my life where I said, okay, pump the brakes. Mm. You came out here to be an actor. You came out here to really touch this business to give everybody an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this is where I said I had to really back in and I said, okay, I'm going to start Indie Night Film Festival. Wow. And then when I went to go do it, Denton, I told him, they said, well, what's Indie Night Film Festival? I said, I'm about to do the first weekly film festival. He said, it'll never work. I said, what do you mean it'll never work? <sighs> and this was someone that was white that told me this. Wow. They said it would never work because film festivals are once a year. Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, there's so many films out there today. Mm. Not everybody has an opportunity to show their art yep. on the big screen. Absolutely. So you're saying it's not going to work, but mm. you're saying it's not going to work because you yep. like my ideal. Mm. And that's what always happens within Hollywood or within America. You tell somebody something, they go, oh, that doesn't work. It'll never work. Yeah. And they're saying that because they don't want to see you succeed. Mm. So I said, I'm going to do it anyway. And so this is, I'm going into my eighth season of doing Indie Night eighth at, at the Ch TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And my motto is this, why should you have to wait once a year to be seen mm. and miss all this work in between? Yep. And we know in Hollywood, they always ask, what's the last thing you did? And you say, well, I did a movie two weeks ago, but it won't come out the next year. Mm. Nobody wants to wait that long. It's true. You know, so people want to have the opportunity yep. as a writer, as an actor, as a director, as yep. a producer to show your art on the big screen. That's Absolutely. the common goal. We're trying to get to the big screen. Yep. So why not start on the big screen? And so by building Indie Night, I knew that this was helping everybody. Now I'm coming into the stages where I say, now Indie Night has to go on the road. Indie Night has to be in every city in the United States, but not only that, Indie Night needs to be the bridge mm. for African yeah. actors, mm -hmm. writers, directors to get into Hollywood. Absolutely. It's needed. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of talent out there, but they just don't know how to get in. Yeah. So if you build a platform and give everybody an experience to show their art on the big screen, yeah. it's helping everybody. Yeah. And I've, I've always been there. That's how... That's what's in my DNA. That's mm. what my father's, my father's always done, is help people. Mm. And so I, I, I kind of take that from him. Mm. And you know, they said the apple doesn't fall too far, far from, from the tree. Yeah, absolutely. And so knowing my parents, they're the greatest. And so it, it opens up to me to be who I am. Mm. I don't know how to be anything else but the way I was raised. Mm. Do you think that the way you were raised though, I mean, your dad is a reverend. Yes. Um, he's the chairman for NAACP, NAACP yeah. which is a big organization in America. Yeah. Um, do you think that how you were raised in the church mm. has defined who you are? I can say a little bit percentage of that, okay. but at the end of the day, it doesn't. It, it, you can't. I can't go with the church just being it, okay. because it starts with the parents. At the end of the day, as, we, as kids, we're sponges. 
And what we pour into that sponge is what that kid is going to become. Mm -hmm. So my parents instilled in me, always look a person in the eye, always be respectful, mm -hmm. and always admit your wrongdoings. Mm -hmm. Because it shows that you know the only thing you have, the, which is the only thing you own in life, is your name. Mm. And when you dirt that, you're done. And so growing up, I was always that kid that, you gotta understand this, my father, mm -hmm. wow, I saw something in my life mm -hmm. that I didn't realize till later. I didn't know who my father, I didn't really know how big my father mm. was until I got older, mm -hmm. you know? Um, knowing that when you got Nelson Mandela mm -hmm. just getting out of jail, but then yet he's sitting right here in front of you. Wow. Growing up, and I'm a little, I'm a little kid. Wow. Or knowing that you have Benjamin E. Mays, you know, who sitting in front of you, knowing Jesse Jackson, Andrew Young, mm. all these greats in your presence. Wow. Or I can say this because. I'll never ever forget it. I remember being a kid and the telephone ringing. Mm -hmm. And I answered the phone. And I heard a voice say, yes, uh, this is uh, President Jimmy Carter. And I speak to Dr. Amos C. Brown. I said, who? <laughs> this is President Jimmy Carter. Yeah, 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 whatever. I hung the phone up. <laughs> so then my dad comes in. He goes, he says, who's that on the phone? I said, man, somebody playing on the phone talking about he's President Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Boy, give me the phone. That's the president. You know? Wow. And so I really start. I didn't know, but I wow. started understanding. And then what I really pretty much understood mm. was when my great friend uh, Jamie Foxx took me to uh, an Oscar party. Okay. And we're at an Oscar party. And I lie to you, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was fake, like crazy. But the door opened up, walks in Bill Clinton. And he beelined and came straight to me. And I knew I had to let him know who I was. Mm. And so he pulled me in as I put my hand. He pulled me in. He says, how are you? And I said, I said, President Clinton, I'm Dr. Amos C. Brown's son. He said, oh, he said, your father, I really love your father. Oh, wow. You know, your father's the greatest. You know, your father helped me get elected. Wow. Amos Brown, you, you said my love, Amos. So mind you, I'm in the room with all the peers, everybody in Hollywood. So they're looking at me like, what is <laughs> President Clinton saying Same to David? Today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not understanding there's a lot of history to it. Wow. You know, and so, um, you know, I remember, um, you know, uh, Fox saying, uh, Dave Brown, you go to anybody else to say hello to the president? I said, Fox, he knows my father. <laughs> you know? And he's like, oh, oh, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it was a great situation mm. of understanding that, and that's what I took from my father. Mm. No matter how big you are, it's what you leave on each and every person's mm -hmm. mind Absolutely. when you around them. And that's what even here, being in here in yeah. Africa, yeah. it's the same thing. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm sincere about everything. If I can't do something, I'm gonna tell you, I can't do it. But if I can't do it, I'm gonna make it happen. And so this is something that... So would you say that your dad is your inspiration or your role model? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being he is of nine kids from Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, my father's mentor was Mega Evers. Wow. Mega Evers, who was gunned down in a mm -hmm, driveway mm -hmm. in Mississippi. And Mega Evers took my father at the age of 15. Wow. To San Francisco, to the NAACP, wow. where my father became the president of the NAACP. Mm. And there he met Martin Luther King. Yeah. And Martin Luther King told my father to go to Morehouse. Wow. And when he went to Morehouse, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Martin Luther King taught at Morehouse one semester 
Really? He taught one semester, but he taught only eight students. Wow. All eight of them became big time in the civil rights movement. My father, uh, Julian Bond, mm -hmm. all of them became big time in the civil rights movement. Wow. And so I took it upon myself to say that there's a message that has to be told. Mm -hmm. So I had my father come down and sit in front of my cameraman, and he talked for three and a half hours wow. about growing up, growing up with Martin Luther King and mm -hmm. all the stuff he's went through and then the civil rights movement and the marches and everything. And it was like going back in time. So when I sit there and listen to him, mm -hmm. I go, I'm still amazed mm -hmm. every day because I know there's more in that, you know, yeah. in, in his Him, mind yeah. that he, he hasn't just, shared. You know, share, you know? Yeah. And so I, I, I talked to some of my colleagues, um, Datari Turner, uh, Jamie Foxx, and they was like, yeah, this is a story that has to be told. Mm, so we have to put this out because people have to know it. I ran into Maxine Waters, and she said, oh, Brown, we got to tell that story. We have to tell that story. <laughs> Your father is, and so when you hear people mm. of that magnitude that talk about how, then you got to say, I have a responsibility. To make sure it happens. Yeah, to make sure it happens, but also to be mm -hmm. a part of the legacy yeah. that he has set. Mm. Because mm. a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of parents that dig mm -hmm. and dig and done so much, but you have to grow it. It's true. They laid the foundation. You have to grow this tree. And that's what I'm trying to do in Hollywood is grow this tree to go all over, mm. to go all over to not only to Africa, but to everywhere. everywhere. Because at the end of the day, I was always raised no color line. Yeah. I don't see nobody different. I see everybody the same, same. you know. But then again, I also understand my, 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 where I came from, from. Yeah. and what being in Africa, what we're all about. I will never, mm. ever forget that. Mm. and about the struggles. Mm. Just as anybody would never forget about the struggles that they went through in the other thing, mm. whether it be the Holocaust or whatever, they know it. Yep. And what's, what's the saying in the Holocaust is never again. Mm. That's what they say. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. And, and ours is, 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 is and what we went through, mm. we have to understand and know that it wasn't easy for us either. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, we're going to go for a commercial break and come back, but I really want to talk about the role model of the man, the male, mm. and how important it is in our generation now. Um, in the UK, we have a lot of um, knife crime, um, a lot of black youths, um, Africans, they're killing themselves, they're shooting themselves. And obviously it's a similar thing in America. Mm. How important is it to have good role models, especially black role models? Oh. Um, we'll talk about that after the commercial sure. break. Guba Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Guba Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 40% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Guba card can also be used as a prepaid Visa card with Access Bank R Partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Call us or WhatsApp us on 0245-156-705. Visit www.gubadiaspora.com. Guba card, the best discount card in Ghana. Welcome back from that short commercial break. So my question is, how important is it to have good black male role models? It's very important. Um, I don't think we reach back down enough. Mm. We don't reach back down enough. Um, a lot of kids don't today in the States don't realize the struggle that our fathers have gone okay. through. They don't understand the, 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 the groundbreaking, like I said, that, that they've laid for us. Yeah. And I think when you ask them, 
about the NAACP, mm. what is it? They, they don't know. know. And so I think that our greats need to, there's the next tier of greats yep. that have the ear to all the younger generation. Mm. Because so I believe, I mean, social media has really messed up the world. It's really messed up the world. And I'm talking about in a sense to where people don't communicate anymore. Mm. Everything you got to do, 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 you know yep. what I'm saying? And I tell like, even when we bring our kids to the table, you know, it's like, hey, all phones in the middle of the table. Yeah. Nope, we're not, you know. Yeah. Our social media was go outside and play. Yeah. You True. knew, you know, you knew where all the kids were because you saw all the bikes in front of the house. Yeah. You know, you had to be back, be back, back in the house before the street lights came yeah. on. And we don't do enough of communicating with our young. Mm. We don't have enough role models that's reaching back. And we need that. Mm. We have to do that because if we don't plant the seeds as our parents planted in us, yeah. we can't let social media raise our kids. Absolutely. It can't happen because the things that they're being exposed to are, am I great because I have a certain amount of likes? Mm. It's true. Likes don't make you great. And the thing about it is everybody, oh, how many followers you have? How many followers? I said, let me yeah. tell you something. <laughs> if you gonna have followers, you gonna have followers when you say, let me throw a party mm -hmm. and see how many people show up to the party. Mm -hmm. That's followers. Mm -hmm. It's true. That's how I looked at it. I was yeah. packed out places in Hollywood because you gotta understand this. It's hard to have an event in Hollywood and have everybody come mm -hmm. and be a part of you. And I've been doing it since 94. Wow. So followers don't make you great. And people got to really understand this. If that's the case, then everybody in social media should be millionaires. It's true. You're absolutely because right. they say if they have, everybody got 10 million followers, then if you sell that dress, you should be a millionaire. It's true. But they don't understand that people are using social media because they're, 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 they're nosy. Mm. They just want to know what you're, you're doing. doing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it becomes a, a situation where people are living lives that they're not, they're, they're writing lives yeah. that they're not really living. living. And so we have to be able to, to, to be able to take these, the phones away from them, mm. sit down and talk to them, yeah. understand what's going on in their lives, understand what's going on in their minds mm. because we can't let social media raise mm -hmm. our children, Absolutely. whether it be white, black, Asian, yep. Chinese, it doesn't yep. matter. We have to be able to bring the, 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 the level of communication mm. back in the play mm. in our daily lives. Absolutely. So what are some of the topics or discussions that you do on your radio show? What do you, what do you talk about? So I have a radio show. I'm on Dash Radio on every, every yeah. Tuesday. On, it's called Hot Seat LA. Okay. Um, I had the opportunity where they came to me and they was like, Dave, you're, you're a brand. Mm -hmm. um, people really listen to you. If they come in and want to hang with you at a party, they, they want to hang with you on air. Mm. And so I, I, you know, um, I had a friend, and he, does, he doesn't know how influential he is to me because he kind of opened me up to really seeing him do something. You know, you had, you know like when I was back in high school mm -hmm. and I played basketball, there was a guy that I looked up to because he was great mm -hmm. at playing basketball. And I wanted to be like, so here's a guy that's in entertainment. I watched him. Okay. And he's been a great friend of mine. And I watched Jamie Foxx, who's a triple threat. Mm. Comedy, music, Musician, and acting. Actor. And then he also took on when he did his radio show. Mm. And I would sit there and watch how he would just entertain and just, he could grab any mm. opportunity and turn it into something big. And so I would sit there and go, wow, this is crazy. So when I, they, they came to me and brought in this said opportunity, you know, I was always taught at Morehouse, before you jump in this situation, go in, learning, understanding, watch. Yeah. I watch everything. People don't understand. Wow. I watch everything that goes on around me. Mm. But I'm watching it to understand how yeah. not to be. Okay. So I can be. Wow. Not trying to, I always say that you watch people, and that's what one of my professors told me in college. 
He said, watch people and you learn a lot more instead of just coming in and just talking. So when I'm in situations, I look and I watch and I'm like, okay, I see how he's doing. Mm. I see how, okay, all right, all right. Because you got to have that type of person to, yeah. to help you. Mm. And I had great mentors mm. around me to understand how to maneuver through Hollywood. Mm. I mean, you've mentioned um, Jamie Foxx. How did your relationship start with him, you it, know? Oh, man, it's crazy. Um, he was on Living Color, and my roommate back then was DJ Twist. Mm -hmm. And he was the DJ after Sean Wayans was on there. And I knew of him, he knew of me, you know, and like I said, I would have these parties. Mm -hmm. In '94 and stuff. I need to and, come to one of and, your parties. And, and oh yeah, we, you gotta come. <laughs> you gotta come. It's, inc it's incredible. And everybody would come. And so um, I was doing this movie called uh, Rebound, the Earl Earl Manigault story. Okay. And it was Eric LaSalle's directing debut. Eric LaSalle, who was on ER, okay. was on Coming to America, had the Jerry Curl. Yeah, yeah. It was his first directing debut, and I got a role in the movie. Wow. So we're shooting in Toronto, Canada. Mm-hmm. So I get up there and I'm there for four and a half months. And so wow. I'm just walking down the street and I look across the street and I'm like, yo, Fox, yo, Fox. He said, hey, Brown, what's up? And he comes over and I said, I'm here for four and a half months. And this is what, 95. I'm here for four and a half months. He said, I'm here for four months. He was doing a movie called Booty Call. Wow. And then that's where we connected and we've been friends ever since. Wow. And, and, and you know, Always, you know, our daughters grew up wow. uh, being friends and best friends, and you know, it's a, it's a family. You mm. know what I'm saying? And so, all these people, you know, that you gotta have people that look out for you. Like yeah. I said, Morris Chestnut, mm. another one. You know, he's the pioneer. He's he's the one that showed me. Like yep. I said in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I have all these pioneers, but I listen. I listen to them. I'm not the guy who walks in and act like I know it all. Okay. Because I don't know it all. I can learn yeah. by people giving me, no, I wouldn't do that. I should do that. Mm. Oh, okay. But that's how we came. And, and, and um, it's been a great, mm. great journey. So, you, I mean, what you're saying is, in essence, is that mentorship is important. Very much. Very much. Very much. And so that's what it went. And me getting the show, mm. the, the radio show, and I go on live every Tuesday on Dash Radio, mm -hmm. Dash Talk Radio. It's called Hot Seat LA, every okay. Tuesday from six to seven. Okay. And we talk about everything. And what I do is this, I try to understand what's going on in the media, but then also my opinion on okay. what I think. This year. I'm, and you understand, this. I'm, not, I'm not the guy that's on there that's there to attack anybody. Okay. But I'll say right is right, wrong is wrong. Yeah. Because that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I see something like, ah, I don't know if you should have done that. You mm. know what I'm saying? But I'm not there. To, I've never been the guy to want to make people look bad. Yeah. You see, TMZ was a show when it was first started, mm -hmm. was to talk about what you're doing, mm. highlighting what celebrities are doing. Mm -hmm. But then the viewership wasn't. Wasn't great. Wasn't great. So then what is the number one thing that people like? Drama. Mm -hmm. So then it returned to. What? Denta caught driving, <laughs> drunk down the street. Yeah. The, 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 the sound that nobody wants to hear. Yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> Denta, yeah. you know, you didn't want to hear that. Yeah. And so now I like to bring the positive, the positive things okay. about a person, but then also say, hey, get it right. Yeah. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. But then let's get it right. Yeah. Let me talk about everything from sports to everything. And it's, it's, okay. it's, it's a, you know, a variety show. Okay. Really. Okay, sounds exciting. Yeah. Whilst you're in Ghana, whilst you're going to go to Senegal, are you looking at investment opportunities um, within Africa? <sighs> yes. Um, you know, my sister and my brother-in-law, you know, we get it from my mom because my mom does real estate. Ah. She does real estate in San Francisco. Okay. And um, she's good at it. Mm. And she's made a great living out mm. of it. And uh, those of you know that if you live in San Francisco, it's like living on the moon. Yes. To where it's going to pay, you got to pay. Expensive. Yeah, very expensive. So it's something that's been, you know, trickled down in mm. my family. So my sister and my brother-in-law have taken on the experience mm. of, of doing real estate. And we talked about we have to get property here in Africa. Mm. We have to get something, you know. 
uh, we have to open up something here, strip malls or something, mm. something that we can give back because if we don't yeah. acquire, and I know you said we have to acquire the land yeah. in order to do that, but you know, this is a great space to Absolutely. buy property. Absolutely. And when I see y'all have all <laughs> these huge grounds, I'm sitting there going, how much it goes? <laughs> Y'all talking about eighty eighty thousand dollars? I'm not like what? Incredible! That was back when I was in college in Atlanta. That's how much stuff costs. Mm. And mm. nowadays everything is a lot higher. Mm. Mm. But yes, I am. Yeah, definitely. So have. definitely, real estate is something that you're doing. The and then, and what about with, with the Browns? Definitely will come back. What about indie nights? Yeah. Um, will you be looking for some talent here who are doing short films to yeah. try and take them? you know, to kind of promote what they're doing. Yes, because see, what I, what I envision, Andy and I, I, I want to be the, to say, I want the studios and everybody to come to me and say, what's hot? Okay. What's hot out there? Mm. What's the next best thing? Yeah. What's the next movie? Who's the next actor? Who's the next producer? Who's the next writers? And Andy Knight has put out so many people. Okay. Um, so does yeah. it act like an agent as well, agency, or well, you, know, you I, just... I think it all, it, it all can come, come together, the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because at the same time, you're giving everybody opportunities. Oh, yeah. It's the greatest thing. Yeah. And so what Indie Night is going to be is it's going to be the American Idol for film. Mm. I'm going to do it in Miami, Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, New York, wow. Ghana. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You want to yes. go in Ghana, you want to hit Nigeria, and you want to do it in, in places, but you want to bring out talent and bring it back. Yeah. Give everybody that opportunity, opportunity. to see the talent. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of talent out there, but a lot of people don't know how to get to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you're right. And so when I sit around my peers, they say, why? This is incredible. Mm. Nobody's ever thought about that. It's true. And so I've had everybody, like guys like Stephen Cape, who mm -hmm. came in Indie Night at the beginning, who, who was the director from Creed II. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know? um, Jules Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, who's a writer that came out of Indie Night that wrote Creed II, wow. that is now just finished doing, well, they just finished doing Space Jam 2. Wow. He's writing that, and now he's doing a lot of other things in Hollywood wow. and working with some That's greats. That's incredible. Like, you know, like the Jamie Foxx is mm -hmm. working on, you know, these, it's giving me an opportunity. So mm. I feel good mm. about knowing that it's helping people. And then, you know, I got, I have to really say this because my, my, and my sister, she's here today. Mm -hmm. um, Robbie Reed. Uh, a lot of people don't know, understand who Robbie Reed is, but she is the gatekeeper pretty much in the Hollywood. Wow because she made so many people famous. She's the one that founded Denzel, Halle Berry, Jamie Foxx. Wow. Um, you know, uh, Beyonce gave her first role in hip hop. You know, wow. She made everyone who they are. And she's a blessing. Robbie Reed came down to Indie Night the first time, the first season I did it, and experienced it and said, this is incredible. I will be here once a month wow. looking for talent. Wow. And she's an executive over at BET. Wow. And she gives that opportunity mm. for you to really get to the next level. Mm. And so she works with a guy by the name of C.O. Brown. Yeah. You know, C.O. Brown is my brother. I call him, I say, yo, I say, you can't be nothing but my brother. You got my last name. Yeah. You got to be my brother. <laughs> so C.O. Brown and Robbie Reed have really put a lot of things in, 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 fantastic. in order. Fantastic. Uh, of giving everybody opportunities. That's fantastic. And so these type of situations mm -hmm. where you have um, Ruth Carter. Mm -hmm. Ruth Carter, those of you who don't know, she did uh, Black Panther, mm -hmm. did all the costumes for Black Panther. Yeah. And for her to receive her Oscar, wow. and Robbie bring her down to it's Indie incredible. Night and sit on the stage and talk about all that she has done. Because mm -hmm. if you look up and look at her portfolio of films that she's worked on, she's done so many great yes. films. And she talks about what she had to go through to get this golden man is priceless. Yeah. The, what she's saying was priceless. Yeah. And so we have so many greats that will come down um, and talk about their experiences mm. in Hollywood. And that's what Indie Night is about. Mm. It's also being that blueprint mm. to let all the actors, writers, directors, producers know 
what's going on. What's going on. And so this is a great situation, wow. you know, because there's a lot of great greats out there that are coming Absolutely. Out. Yeah. You're right, and it's just it's just really having that opportunity, like you said. Yeah. You know, people don't get that opportunity. So I think Endy Night would be a great opportunity for Africa. Exactly. Um, not just Ghana here, but, you know, Africa. Africa. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. we have so much talent, but we just right. don't get the spotlight and we don't get the opportunity. Right. Um, and so I think that I would definitely be pointing out some people to your direction who are doing amazing stuff over here yeah. um, and see whether you can connect with them. Oh, I appreciate it. But before we wrap up, mm -hmm. three things that yeah. you're going to be taking away from you from Ghana. Three things that mm -hmm. I'm taking? Mm. The number one thing is knowing, wow, that our ancestors died for us. Mm -hmm. The struggle that they went through mm -hmm. can almost, no, I can't say almost, can bring a tear to your eye. Yeah. Knowing that you, you sat in the same room. Mm that a lot of those people went through mm. a lot mm. for us. Mm. And we don't, we don't embrace it. Yeah. We as black people don't embrace it. We don't want to come back and, and understand this. And I say this, that you have to come back and you have to experience this, man. Yeah. You got to really experience this. Because being in, God. It's tough. It's tough. Being in that dungeon, mm. we all could have been. Absolutely. We all could have been. Yeah. And being there to experience it, there's not no, there's not one person that's gonna come back and not get this reaction mm. and this feeling that I'm mm. receiving right now. And you can't go back to America nope. and not want to say, I experienced the whole thing. Y'all gotta get it. Wake up. Y'all gotta understand. You gotta wake up and understand yeah. what you what, what, what we're missing. Yeah. There's so much black on black crime in America. I always wonder why. Why can't we just all get along and just understand mm. it? Let's help each other. Mm. You know, I have a great friend that says we need to stop always trying to network up and just network across. It's true. Because the people that we have that can make us are right here. They're right here with us. So it's a, it's, it is a touching thing. Yeah. Um, you, you can't leave here and not take that back and be able to say that you're touched mm. by being here and knowing that, wow, this is what America should be. Mm. People getting along, yeah. you know, and for what is all given to those in Africa and how they still their struggles. And mm -hmm. We trip off the little smallest things in America. Yeah. But then again, I see people walking around with no shoes on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the clothes, you know what I'm saying? It's, mm. We have too much, too much to be arguing over mm. the smallest things because it's what's true. going on here is totally different. It's true. It's so true. I have to say that. I, I appreciate, really, I appreciate you, um, Dave, um, for coming on the show, for being very inspirational, and for sharing what's in your heart, yeah. um, which I think is important. I think that, like you said, you need to come back to experience it. Yeah. You can't explain it. You have to come back and experience it. Yeah. Um, so to all my viewers, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I will see you the same time, same place next week. Stay blessed.